Hello and welcome back to the international news stage at CES 2015. I'm Orfin Later from Stuff, and I'm joined by Vikas Gupta uh, from Wonder Workshop. He's going to show us a very interesting uh, robot that's designed to encourage kids to get into coding. So with that, I'll leave it to you, Vikas. Hello, um, I'm Vikas Gupta, one of the founders and the CEO of Wonder Workshop. Uh, and I want to show you robots that we've designed uh, for kids as young as five, up to any age, to get them to code and learn to code in a very fun way. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about our company. We uh, started out as parents who were unhappy with the way our, the products that we put in the hands of kids. Um, don't encourage them to create with the tools they have and, and how can we change that? Um, and especially inspired by the fact that countries like uh, Estonia I... that mandate their first graders to learn coding, uh, which we don't do as much of that in other parts of the world. Uh, we started out with a crowdfunding campaign that went very well. We raised about one and a half billion dollars in 30 days uh, through crowdfunding, which was pre-orders for about seven thousand uh, from seven thousand orders for robots from around the world. And the question we get asked a lot is, why should a child learn to code? And the answer is really simple: Our children are growing up in a world much more surrounded by software than it ever was, and learning to code gives them the ability to make sense of the world they're growing up in. That's why they should learn to code. And the question also is, how, what does computer programming or coding mean for a five-year-old? And the important answer there, what we found was, kids have a much better grasp of what it actually means than what we can do. Uh, it really is about having the ability to control the world around them through what they do. Um, and it, leading from that are seven different powerful ideas of computer science with robotics that we base our, our work on. Um, and the fact is, computer science remains abstract, and a good way to make it tangible is through physical products. The research that has done, gone on in, this, in places like MIT and Tufts, and our version was to bring robots to life in the hands of kids through software that lives on a touch device. Um, we are live now in iOS and Android. Uh, on iOS, we have four different applications. One of them is called Blockly, which allows kids to visually program the robots in a very fun way and also to go younger than kids who don't even know yet how to read or write, still be able to program robots in a very visual way using interfaces like music and drawing. Um, and then we also blend in hands-on play with, with coding, which allows kids to bring their Lego bricks to play with the robots and allow them to build with uh, Legos on top of our robots. And finally, we also provide kids uh, content that allow them new ways to explore stuff with robots, uh, especially when it comes to ideas and activities and challenges, which comes in a form of a magazine that we release every two weeks um, to our community, uh, and also provide kids uh, ways of looking at how other people around the world, uh, what other people around the world are doing with our robots. Um, and with that, let's do a quick demo of what the robots can do. Yeah, I think we need to see how, uh, how this works, how Dash and Dot. Function, so. so shall I hold that? Sure. Good, thank you. Um, this is Dash. Um, Dash connects uh, wirelessly over Bluetooth to uh, applications on an iPad, and Dash can move around. Uh, Dash can look around. Dash can make sounds, and if you want to hold the mic to the robot, maybe. <laughs> you getting that? So <laughs> and, um, Dash can be very expressive. Dash comes with accessories. For example, here's a xylophone that you can attach to Dash. And Dash can move around with the xylophone. And Dash can play the xylophone. So what I'm going to do a very quick demo is how we can use music as an interface to program Dash. So there's a different application called Xylo that I'm going to open up on the iPad. And it's going to connect to the robot wirelessly. And then I can select a new song to play. It gives me a preset sound that I can try. So I'm going to try Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Let me fix that a little bit one second. <laughs> so. Thank you. 
interesting things with the music is you can actually tweak it and change it in real time. And what you change gets reflected in the robot immediately. So that's one of the applications which is specifically robot playing a xylophone through music. Another applications are applications like Path, which allow kids to program by simply drawing a path on the robot on the on the on, on a screen and having a robot follow that. And it allows kids to program, for example, a robot to go from their playroom all the way to the kitchen, ask their mom for a cookie, and bring it back. All done with the visually, <laughs> all done very visually without ever having to learn to read or write, for example. Um, we'll do Something I don't have a lot of room on the table, so I'm going to see if I can actually make it. Can we put them on the floor? Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's try that. Do that. Okay. So I'm going to have him try and navigate maybe around the the the, the table and come back to me. I ran into the desk. Close, close. So, and then finally, the application that allows us kids to program in a very interesting ways is an application called Blockly, which is a visual programming tool that gives kids full access to all the capabilities of the robot and allows the robot um, to get access, use its sensors, which has a ton of them, and all the actions on the robots that kids can use to program. And this is also being used in a lot of schools now to introduce programming to kids in elementary schools. Very interesting. So, um, so, uh, how much does uh, does does Dash and Dot cost? Uh, Dash is one ninety nine. Uh, Dot, which I don't have with me today, so Dash and Dot together cost two fifty nine dollars. Uh, they're available on our website, MakeWonder dot com, uh, and also on Amazon dot com. And what sort of um, have you, what sort of a level of adoption have you seen? You know, have you, have you, have you, are a lot of people using this already? Are you seeing some interesting results? Yes, we, uh, we shipped about 30,000 robots to customers around the world in about 20 different countries in uh, November and December of last year. Uh, we're seeing great feedback from customers, what they're doing with the robots, what they're building with the robots, and uh, the, how they're programming it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very excited about what teachers are doing with the robots in classrooms as well. Uh, so yes, it's being used actively around the world, and uh, we're pretty excited about where they're going. Anything specific, any one sort of, you know, uh, one one story that you have of, uh, of, of the way in which they're being used? Um, so I think one interesting thing that people done, we've seen do is, um, this is a Lego brick extension which attaches to the robot. And it allows people to build with Lego bricks and with techniques. So what we've seen really interesting stuff people do is use Blockly to program the robot and use Lego bricks and techniques to build physically with the robot and convert the robot to do more interesting stuff that otherwise typically with any existing tools takes them several hours to do, and they can build things with the robots in a matter of minutes. And sharing that on YouTube and what they've done has been the most fascinating thing we've seen our community do. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be back with some more, of, uh, some more interesting pitches in a few minutes' time, so stay tuned.